Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Oh, buddy. Oh, my gosh. It's Friday. You know it. I know it. Hot diggity dog. It's SketchUp Live Day. And we're going to be modeling. Tyson's in here going to get you some modeling going. And uh, it's going to be a great day full of tips, tricks, fun. Uh, just laid back starts the weekend, folks. So we're going to get a little modeling going. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Let us know in the chat where you're coming from. And, uh, oh, boy. Enjoy the show. Here's Tyson. <laughs> wow, Matt, thanks. I was just having fun. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta bring the music on Friday. Man. Let's just do that some more. Da, da, da. <laughs> oh, wow. I got a couple <clears throat> hours of music lined up. We can uh, we can get the DJ set going. Oh, I got hours of dance moves lined up. We are match made <laughs> in heaven, buddy. <laughs> oh, that is so that is so not true. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. All you need is shoulders up, so you don't need the full body yeah. dance move. You know, you can fake it. Just uh, <laughs> what you got. So. Like you can imagine, I'm doing the moonwalk, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess we could do the Carlton. Yeah, that works. Some semblance of it. <laughs> Bringing the fun. Hey, everybody! <laughs> Here we go. Um, welcome back. So let's uh, let's do a little recap of where we're at. So for the past two weeks and for this month, our idea has been to sort of explore what we're calling low poly modeling, although that may not be um, entirely correct, but kind of this stylized version of modeling and stylized illustrative version. Now, um, this was the original kind of inspiration that we have been using. Um, I think Aaron used this as well, and so credit, this was on ArtStation. Um, I cannot pronounce this name, but I, I thought it was a really cool example of, again, maybe it's not necessarily low poly, but it's certainly very stylized. Um, cool little lighthouse. Yeah, 100%, and the link uh, to that model is <clears> in the uh, description. So all the attribution and stuff is in there as well. Check it oh, out. Check it out. Thank you. Now, for today, what we're going to try and do is explore some tools that maybe will do some terrain in here. And we're going to explore this idea a little more of how to be random in a computer software, right? Like computer software ultimately is insanely precise, so we're going to explore tools to how to be random. Last time, Aaron built out um, a lot of the sort of structure around this house, which was awesome. It looks great. Thank you, Aaron. And, um, and the week before, I explored some plugins and tools to build uh, like the rocks and the tiles. Um, but that's, uh, that's where we came from. This is where we're going. Now, I think one thing that I, might be worth mentioning here, here's another example of, you know, this one actually is a low poly when we look at, oops, where did my image go? But a lot of the detail is in the uh, materials, mm -hmm. even though this is super low poly. And... I, one of the things I think yeah, that Aaron and I, like uh, some of the, we, we have some differences in how we approach things and, and how we prep for things, but we're both, I think, consistent in that neither of us are that key on materials, <laughs> like throwing textures on the model. And SketchUp is not great at this sort of material application. Let's just own that up. Um, we could do it, we could make materials somewhere else, we could apply them, but what we're gonna do is try and create the look with geometry more than necessarily materials. So with that in mind, let's get into it. Okay, so, um, 
Let's tackle the uh, terrain first. I think, I think that'd be good to do. Okay, um, do let's see. So over here to the side, I've got our native tools, uh, sandbox tools here, part of SketchUp Pro. And I am going to create a grid. Now, the grid spacing, I think I've got this at two feet. Whatever the default is, I could change this, let's say, to five feet. And then I click, pull a grid out in both directions and that gives us something to work with. And I'm going to give us a little more detail than this. Let's so let me delete that and make our spacing maybe three feet. Did I make it three feet? Yeah. I want to be a little bit careful because obviously we can create a really big grid with a ton of stuff and then the tools don't uh, don't behave that that nicely once you've got too many things going on mm -hmm. um, but with this in mind I don't have a definitive plan for how to do this like if we want to put this up on a cliff or make kind of a, a stream going through here or a path so I'm not gonna get I think that ambitious with trying to do something um, but let's just make this sort of a fall off over on this side and this side will be a little bit flatter and maybe a path coming up here something like that I don't know and cool. what we yeah, can that sounds do, good to me yeah anything's better than the CD that it's on now it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah the the floating in space CD <laughs> <laughs> it could be a flying saucer yeah all right. Uh, in space. <laughs> um, hey, to the folks in the chat, thanks for tuning in. Looks like it's uh, windy over in the UK, so stay safe out there, folks. Um, what did I see? 122 miles an hour. Hot dog. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty quick. Really? So, uh, yeah, be careful of any falling branches or any. Um, yeah, all that stuff. Scary. So. Oh man. Stay safe, but um, yeah, we got hi from uh, from Russia. Hey, we got hi from hey, Russia. Halifax, UK. Hey. Oh wow, awesome! Hi from Norway. Hello. Oh, excellent. We got two Norway people. Hello. Um, let's see, we got Belgium. Hello. Uh, oh my gosh, Newfoundland. Hi. Um, <laughs> Norfolk. Hey. Pacific Northwest, Hi. Devon, UK. Hi. What do we got? Peru. Hey, hello. Oh, oh my gosh. This is awesome. Hello to everyone. Welcome in. <clears throat> Welcome in. Thanks for spending your Friday with us. Um, we got a little awesome. bit of terrain going here. We're starting off, starting off hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pennsylvania. Hey. used up all my greetings so if anybody else says hi we're all out <laughs> um i'm just using the native tools for now i'm gonna jump uh, and show a little bit of artisan in a moment but this is just all the um that this is one area where it's nice to have that new lasso select that lasso select is new to to 2022 and now it makes it easier to do this type of thing Mm -hmm. A little more organic than trying to mm -hmm. make a rectangle look natural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to make this not too ambitious. It's still a little bit, uh, you know, not happy about how many. But let's uh, let's keep going here. So let's grab something like this. I'm just grabbing some random areas, and we're just. Moving them up and down a little bit. Mm -hmm. My yeah, part of what uh, what Aaron mentioned last week, um, and I think is definitely true for me, is that unless you sort of like force yourself to new use the new tools like Lasso Select or you know Tag Tool or whatever, like you just kind of get stuck doing it the old way. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you kind of have to practice with uh, using it just so you can work it in because it is faster and like easier and stuff. But you're just not used to it. You don't. Uh, 
don't default to that. Yeah, it's definitely cool when you find a new, uh, a new use, and you're like, oh yes, I didn't know that was going to be, a, be awesome. All right, so apologize while we get a bit of spinning as it thinks through. <laughs> Yeah, Bill asked, um, is it a result of low poly but heavy components? Um, <clears throat> or is it just grid spacing? What are we, well, what are we running into here? You know, I don't know on the technical side. The sandbox tools were built way back ago, and I don't think they've had um, much love since then. So they're still powerful, but uh, as an example, Artisan, if I come in here and use my sculpting, uh, use this sculpting brush, mm -hmm. and I'll use the arrow keys to make this larger, and then the up and down arrow keys can affect the strength of how much you're you're doing. But boom, see, like this moves a lot faster. Oh so yeah. So you'd kind of be like, why does the other move so slowly? I don't know. Um, so I I'll use the native tools. Um, for some initial just sculpting of big elements and then if you have access to artisan it's a play, paid plug-in but it's it's a pretty powerful one um, mm -hmm. it's very cool so I'm gonna I'll grab a link push to down it. so I, 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 really, I don't know why uh, it, it is a bummer for sure that's All right, so we, we don't, like I said, we don't need to go too crazy here. Um, we've got sort of a something up here where our main area can be. Um, this takes me back. I think the first live stream I did, it was, it's not been a full year, but I, I was using some of these tools to do that Japanese temple on that mountainside. That was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, uh, let's use this. <clears throat> and I'm going to scale it up a bit. But again, to keep with kind of this, well, you know, the CD, <laughs> but we'll, to keep with the, that we're, I don't know, we're making this kind of a vignette, not a, a, not a large piece. So I'm going to make a big old circle. It's up the the number of sides over here. Where's my entity info? Got too many things going on. Um, let's move it all the way to 60. This is big. All right, I'll group this and Yeah, I definitely like the little kind of vignette. Like you built a little diorama, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Set it on your desk or something, just a little slice out of the out of the world there, the little miniature fantasy world. Yeah. Something like that'd be fun. Alright. Come on now. Okay, that should work. Lawrence was asking about your uh, about your cup. He says, "How much does that cup hold? Is it massive or is Tyson very very small?" <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> Cheers to that. Yeah, also, it's to, massive. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to come in person in base camp so you can see how you measure up against Tyson. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Everybody uh, show up with your mug. <laughs> yeah, bring your best uh, your best novelty mug to base camp, and we'll have a we'll have a put it to a vote. Um, yeah, speaking of, if you're not familiar, just a real quick plug: uh, 3D base camp is SketchUp's uh, every two year user conference. It didn't happen in 2020, unfortunately, because of SARS CoV two, but uh, it is going ahead this year. Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. It's going to be uh, September 26th to 30th, uh, and it's the uh, 
the best 3D conference in the world. It's all the all the SketchUp geniuses, all the a bunch of people from our team will be there. A bunch of people doing crazy stuff out in the world will be there. Uh, best place to learn SketchUp. They got all the community stuff. They got we got the big party going. It's fun, um, and you get to go for uh, to see Vancouver. There's there's also um, you know classes where you can get. Um, uh, what do you call those? Like not certifications, but like credits for um, for certain. <clears throat> you know, if you belong to certain uh, professional. CEUs, continuing groups. education units, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So all kinds of great reasons to come over. But uh, yeah, check out 3dbasecamp.sketchup.com uh, for all the information there. And we've also got the. Um, the early bird pricing going on, the uh, ticket prices are only gonna go up from here. So if you wanna buy a ticket, now's the time for sure. Um, and you can go, the first two days of the event are the boot camp, which is sort of like the, um, you know, a lot of intensive training, get up to speed. Um, and then uh, the last three days are gonna be the, uh, the formal base camp. So that's all kinds of classes, you know, um, seeing other people's workflows and just crazy stuff. The SketchUp community is insane. And if you've ever been to a base camp before, you know how much fun it is. So yeah, spread the love, check it out. And uh, we'd hope to see you there. And then, like I said, you can see how you stack up compared to Tyson's height and his month. <laughs> I very much look nice. forward to it. <clears throat> yeah, it's going to be a fun one. As I was spieling about, it looks like you... You got some terrain uh, on there. It looks looks pretty cool. Yeah, thanks. Um, I hope everybody was able to follow. I just used a uh, you know big cylinder and our our terrain that we created and did an intersect with model on the two different groups and then merged them together. So um, if there's questions on that, shout them out. But otherwise, this uh, this uh, this looks fine. So. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do today is talk about a plugin called Scatter. S K A T T E R, I believe. Or is it just T R? Yeah, I think so. I think you're right, yeah. Um, it's another paid plugin, and it's really a powerful one. So if you do landscape or anything where you're doing this sort of, you need to randomize and objects. I'm not an expert on this. I only picked it up recently and have been playing around with it, but I want to show sort of what we can do as an alternative to some of the ways that we like scattered these roof tiles and we're going to scatter some stuff around our little vignette here. So we're going to, let me make sure I save this. <clears throat> um, and let's do a little, uh, little side, let's, pew, we're going to take a side journey just to explore, <laughs> explore this tool a little bit. So I'm going to copy some. Yeah. Do, do you have a sound effect for like tangent? Like um, off-roading. Yeah. Oh, that works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. So here we go. Let's, uh, We'll show we'll show how to use this in a couple different scenarios, and I'll again I'm not an expert, but I I'll just sort of try to um, fuddle my way through some stuff. So here, if we think back two weeks ago to our roof and to make things artistic and complicated you know we made this sort of a curved sloping roof mm -hmm. so we have something similar here what scatter will do let me grab our roof tiles and push this stuff over to the side because we're gonna need some screen real estate this is scatter and if we open it up we get the um, the dialog box. There's tons of options, more than I know about. We're going to go through just a few of them. 
The basics of scatter is that we can pick a few different objects. In this case, I'm going to say a surface, which is this one. Highlights, I pick this, and it's going to start to distribute whatever we want. So now I'm going to, under scattered objects, I'm going to say pick this, and I'm going to pick one, tile six, two, and we can add more and more or remove these pieces from our geometry. So if I just say generate right now, it creates these. Now these are based on whatever axis I had put on here, I don't know. But if we look at this, if I just move this aside, so you can see it's, it's just randomly scattered them across. Mm -hmm. So let's make this more what we want to do with it. So if we look down in distribution, we have random, which could be, we'll come back to, we'll use that in a bit for something else, but let's say grid. And under grid, we have some different options. Um, our spacing, you can see it gives us a preview, which is really nice. So if I say generate now, we get this more even spacing, but it's randomized between the four. And with that in mind, I can look at this and say, you know what, that spacing here should be less. I don't know what it is, but let's just guess. Something like that works. Hmm. Or I could say, let's say 18 to be a little bit overlap. Let's make it 20. And I can generate to preview that. The spacing on the Y looks pretty good, maybe 30. We'll tighten it up a little bit something like that so this is this is pretty cool right we're getting a random assortment of our tiles already on our sloping roof now there's a couple other aspects of this now I again I, I'm not pretending to be an expert here let's randomize a few of these tiles so we can randomize the scale um, I, we don't want you know, if we if we if we got too crazy with this, let's 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 go crazy. Let's say 50 to 180, right? We get this very really overly crazy ones. Yeah. So let's dial that back to maybe um, something like this. That looks okay. Random translation. Um, we can this one. Um, I think, at least for this, for the grid we're doing, we want to be careful and, and really, this needs to be not very much. So I'm going to dial this all the way down to say 0.3 and maybe 0.5 and generate. And we get just a little bit, maybe more, but anyway, we could toggle that off or toggle that on. Uh, mm -hmm. Rotation, let's get a little bit of rotation on these. Five is probably too much, but maybe negative two to negative. So anyway, you can see sort of, you can just play with these and that's not X and Y. You know what? I need, I need Z. So I don't want these at all. Ooh, well, right. maybe I do, maybe, I, you know, but no, let's, let's do. And let's make it like. Yeah, this is really cool. I feel like I, I've seen a bunch of stuff that people have have made using Scatter, but I've never actually seen it like in use before. Yeah. Um, it's really cool to kind of, you know, trial and error and kind of all the different stuff you can change around to make it exactly what you want. It's it's cool. I, I, same. I'm with you. I hadn't. I'd always seen people use it, and then until I just recently started poking around with it. And let me get credit to where it's due because our good friend Eric, um, who helps w uh, build stuff on campus, knows Scatter fairly well because he works in the landscape space a lot. Mm -hmm. So he was able to help get me up and running. So thank you, Eric. Um, this mirroring is cool and it's something that I think a few people pointed out when we created the original one is that we could have used more mirroring vertical we might need to be careful of because it because of how our 
axis was, and so it's 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 putting them too far up in space. Maybe we won't do that for now. Um, and Got some love for scatter in the uh, in the chat and nice. Eric tuning in. Thank you, buddy. Says no problemo. He's happy to to help you out with the scatter. Well, let's plug for a moment. If you want to learn. Um, it, it, there's not a thorough, but if you want to learn this like in an actual uh, setting, Eric has, uh, like I said, Eric works uh, on campus creating some professional level learning content. And he did a class on terrain, like doing sculpting and terrain modeling uh, according to drawings and plans. So go over to campus and check out some of Eric's courses. He's got stuff on V-Ray rendering and using CAD drawings and landscape. It's it's great stuff. Eric's created some really fantastic stuff over there. And it's all free. Hey, campus. Okay. Freely available. That's the best kind. I dropped a link in the chat. So uh, thank you. check those out. Bookmark that tab and uh, yeah, check out some of the great courses over there on SketchUp Campus. Yeah. Now, somebody who knows Scatter better may know if there's a way to actually al alternate these rows as they go up. I, um, I, I imagine there might be. I just don't know. So, in this case, I'm not like this was a great start, right? And now it's easy for me to come in and say, let's just pick, oops, lost my selection. Let's just pick every other row. And move them over by about half. That might have been too much, a little less. Anyway, create some all, uh, and maybe at this point, say okay those are looking good we want them to overlap a little more they're all still components so we can just do something like this and then again if if there are ways to do this that that would be really uh, interesting but again it, it got us quite a I think it's really cool it got us as far as it did if it yeah. t still takes a little bit of tweaking to be like, okay, let's let's take, let's just grab each row, and you know, kind of tweak it a little bit. So we don't have to go any farther with this because we're not going to use it. But um, I wanted to show that. This was an alternate way that we could have approached some of the stuff we did in the very in you know two weeks ago, and this tool, while it is on the you know some I I don't remember what it is it's hundred to two hundred dollars I believe, um, but it's a very robust tool for this sort of thing. So that's an intro to scatter just because I think it could be fun. Let's do one more example with this. We'll make this one. Straight. But let's use and do one more quick roof. And this one we will make actual like it was tiles. Somebody in the chat says you can uh, lift them above the plane and drop them onto the plane using another plugin. That's a good suggestion. So we're going to, um, I'm glad, that's great because we're going to, we're going to show the um, dropping in a little bit when we, when we go back to our landscape. Uh, so great idea. Nice. Very, very solid. Good call. Stay tuned. You can check out how we're doing it. Or how you're doing it. Now, why I say we. I'm you're a co-pilot, Matt. With the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? It's totally you. I'm very much involved. 
I'm sitting here. I'm just number one. <laughs> okay, that's my job. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> your your job is the is the the most important one. While I'm over here rambling incoherently and boring people, you're over there being like, keep it, keeping it fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Or just distracting you from from the main event, from the real <laughs> deal, what people are really here to see. So, I don't know, again, not knowing Scatter well enough, I close out of Scatter if I want to make a new Scatter um, composition, it calls it. There might be a way to leave this open and do that. I don't know. But um, so I've got a new one. I created that surface. We've got our object. Let's go back um, to grid. Let's see our spacing. Looks like I need to dial that. So, can down. you like edit these after you're done? Can you come back in and after you close it out and change stuff? That's a great question, Matt. So if I close out of it, this group, I could right click on this and go down to scatter and say edit composition. And that'll jump me back in here where I can start to tweak it some more. Cool. Um, this one, say we don't need this is just another simple example because it was it was easy um, it, we could lay these down relative to different pieces again I'm not very good at doing that but that's that's pretty that's pretty cool yeah so let's see um, so let's go back to our model and do something different with scatter. Let's take one of our previously made rocks over here. This one will work nicely, I think. Let's make it uh, like this. Let's flatten it out. I want a relatively flat rock and We're gonna just sort of drop this around our our little island here. Rocky Island. Rocky Island, and uh, as always, I, I we'll get better results, of course, if we use a couple of these. But I think we can make the point by just using one, and we'll still have a pretty good looking setup. So I'm going to. Mm -hmm. This is all scaled, right? The the original component. It's back. This is a component. I'm going to ungroup this ex or explode it or make it unique, something like that. I'm just going to explode it and make it a new component and uh, create that. If I look at this, I may want to adjust this. Actually, let me turn my hidden geometry on. Hide this for a moment so that I can sit my axis right in the middle up here. There's probably some ways we, we don't need to do that, but I'm going to see if that helps us. So place one, two, so my axis is somewhere in the middle of here. Now I can delete that line and unhide that edge, which is also in the edit menu, unhide. Nice. Yes. Okay, so we should have... What? Did I... Huh. Okay. <laughs> Let me try that again. I missed something. I'm going to hide that. Make sure. Let me try. We had a couple... Uh keen-eyed viewers in the chat talking about the uh, ridge tiles, the lack of ridge tiles on the, uh, the building, and that it would let a lot of rain in. 
So I don't know what you think about that, because Aaron is still going to be picking up this model uh, next week. Next week will be the last week of this model, so maybe you can leave it for him, or if you, uh, I don't know if you're planning to do that today, or or if it's just, you know, it's <clears throat> magic. There's a magic uh, protection spell <laughs> on it or something like that, so it's waterproof. I don't know. This is a terrible roof. Let's just be let's just be very very clear about it. This is a terrible terrible roof to actually like provide any protection from anything. <laughs> um, we also had a couple of questions for you in the chat. Is there a specific type of modeling that you prefer to use your fancy pen for? Says Chris. I prefer to use my fancy pen, my Wacom tablet for, um, I, I jump back and forth. Uh, no, I think the simple answer is no. Um, I do this because I, I also have, even my mouse is a vertical mouse just because after, you know, some of us, I'm sure everybody can relate after hours and years of working on some mice, you, you cramp up a lot and that's, that's all what led to this so nothing specific I find I translate back and forth easily between the two but that's just because I've been doing it for years um, hey Matt nobody can see nobody can see you but your mug is bigger than mine <laughs> oh yeah this is a jug for sure Matt Matt uh, just lift I, I don't know who who can relate to this when I he's got this <laughs> It's, that's what, that's like what the water cooler, yeah. That's what's happening on Matt's side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta stay hydrated, man. On the water program for sure. Hey, um, good on you. And Transom said maybe the uh, you know the gap in the ridge beam is used to fill the rain barrel, or perhaps just my water bottle. <laughs> that's right. So, I mean, that's what's what's going on there. Um, Lawrence did suggest that you should save before running scatter. You're right you about that. that. So something to keep in mind. Um, let's see. Paul asks if anybody has used SketchUp on a large Cintiq. We uh, one of the guests that we had on Fireside Chat last season uses a Cintiq. Um, let me find. Should I make this aligned or should I make it offset because, you know, everything else is wonky too. But I can Ooh, offsets it. feels like it would be on brand. Right? Let's just leave it there for now. Um, we just were speaking about Eric. Eric uses a Cintiq. I don't know that he uses Ooh. it all the time with SketchUp per se. Um, I, you know, I, I I get by with this one. If it were Cintiq, I'm sure it would work really well, too. So let's take this rock and scatter it around our island. Uh, where is my... There we go. I want to make sure... Hey, we just save. It's saved. Save. <laughs> okay. You got it. This is our host. This is our object. That's a lot. So the density here is in objects per inches cubed. That's based on the size we're working with. This is clearly way too much. So we'll just dial this way back. Now that <clears throat> is still too much, but that's closer to what we want. It's too big, but let's start Let's start working with this. So, where's our, where's our transformations? You know what's interesting? I think about this is uh, this. This is our original one, and mm -hmm. if you use scatter, and you've done what we did with these rocks, where we scaled them all over the place, it's going to use the original uh, component scale size to base this off of. So. If you have some stuff that seems way off, it might be because you've scaled your the shell of your component. I want all of these to be smaller, so I'm going to say the max is actually, let's say, 50% of what this is. 
and this may be 10. So now we get a lot smaller. And that seems cool. better. Uh, translation. This shouldn't matter as much, but uh, yeah, we should be able to random rotation. Let's make this a lot more. If I want to keep it flat, maybe I do not want that Z axis. So let's dial that back. I think. Or that might be something. No, no, sorry, not Z. It's this one. I better dial these back. Eduardo tuning in from Miami. Hey, good to see you. Thanks for thanks for watching. Yeah. Love to have some Floridians on board. <laughs> uh, horizontal, vertical mirroring. So uh, again, this is just sort of a it, something like this. We're just playing with what we we, we want to do. And um, there's there's tools in here. Like if you wanted to scatter something all around an object, we just want this top surface in the default settings. I think are geared towards that but you can work around all sorts of like an object or multiple surfaces um, again that goes sort of beyond what I'm good at but uh, Andy suggested setting the max Z rotation to zero the max Z rotation to zero yeah everything's set down thanks Andy um, dense. Good call. Chris asked uh, both of us, did you wear your Crocs to the office today? I don't know if you caught it, but on Wednesday was our design podcast, uh, Donuts Design and Debate. Um, and we talked about Crocs. I had a footwear designer on. And uh, yeah, <laughs> you'll have to watch that, uh, watch that episode to see how many donuts out of five uh, it was awarded based on uh, the vote, but um, I did not wear Crocs today. I'm also not in the office. Have you, do you, have you ever had a pair of Crocs? I have pair, I have, I don't have the typical pair of Crocs that are just like the ones you see. I have like warm and they, they actually come up ankle high and they're great for snow because I don't have to put socks on. I just throw those on and go out and shovel some snow. I love oh, do they them. have the uh, like the fur inside? No, fur? no, but it's okay. just sort of like a boot, Croc boot. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm a I fan didn't of know Crocs. they made boots. I love. I, they just pull on, they slip on. They're great. Uh, I, I did not wear them <laughs> to the office today. I'm also not in the office. I'm barefoot, but I'm not going to go throwing my feet in the screen. But yeah, hey y'all, <laughs> I'm modeling barefoot. Appreciate is, that. Is that TMI? But, uh, yeah, we're going. Somebody <laughs> asked, right? <laughs> as long as we don't have to see him, that's good. That's, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, draw the line there. Yeah, this is a crack. That's what. It's a transom size. <laughs> oh, of course. This whole thing's a crack. <laughs> um, so that scattered. Uh, maybe dial that down a little bit if it seems like it's too much. Again, I could come in and um, edit. This just take our density down a little more. Now that said, let's show, I don't really have to worry about, but in some areas you would want to exclude this, uh, you know, say from the footprint of our, our building here. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure we're editing this. Under the masks, there's a couple ways where you can actually include or exclude what you want. So under the masks, I'm going to draw a mask and I can actually paint on this surface. And as I paint around oh, here, cool. like if you watch this rock or this one, they get highlighted because now I need to tell it either only include that area or exclude from that area. So under mm -hmm. my mask, this paint mask, I'm going to say, um, 
think this one, and it should remove them nice. from it. So that's cool. Now, yeah, I, really cool. I think we're going to do the same thing and do an inclusion. So let's create a new composition. The host is the surface, the group, or the is this guy. And actually, scrap that. Scrap it. Abort. What I'm going to do, because I had um, like the size and the orientation stuff dialed in, let's take this guy. We could create it new the way we did before, but let's duplicate it. And this time, we'll have the same stuff, but this time, let's add a mask that sort of goes from the house, the front of the house, and comes down here like a pathway. Something like that. I like it. And this time we want that to be included. So let's get rid of, I think, the original one. And this one, let's turn the density back up again. That. Oh, so it's not just for excluding stuff. It's also for changing the, the distribution. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And this one, we don't want those big ones. So let's dial it down to the like 5 and 10 and generate and we get more. So if we wanted to sort of pebble this walkway or something, um, we'll, de we'll bring this up a bit more, but that'll, you know, that's... That's, we don't need to bring it up too much. That's the idea. Yeah, that's and, cool. Yeah, something like that. So, I, this is it's for uh, for a lot of purposes. This is really a very powerful tool. I, I it's been fun playing around with this. This is not a and it, and we can just come into this one. Like I look at this one, it just happens that we've got these two. They're very similar. Just delete one, rotate it, move it, scale it. So once you've created your scatter, you can still keep tweaking it, but you can also just come in and tweak the pieces of it. And uh, all right. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I feel like, you know, random distribution is so hard to get mm -hmm. by yourself. Even when you're trying to do it random, it just ends up being, you know, pretty ordered or like evenly spaced or something like that or at least when i try to to make something look like real life you know right so I yeah that's so awesome tricky. and it's really cool that you can you know edit the individual pieces as well um for when you want to go into the the deets all right clean up those edges a little bit um if there one last thing and we'll I want to try something else. Um, but uh, one of the other tools that got added recently that I think, you know, you don't get to use that often, but if we're just, um, actually, I think we'll do, we'll, we'll build some trees and we'll use this tool, but the move tool has now the option if we toggle through the options we can copy and then click it once again and now there's a stamp mode so boom 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 stamp 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 um, <laughs> so we could easily drop in a bunch of uh pieces like this and then use um fulmer's you know let's say rotate randomly and uh, and still get so mm -hmm. if you know if you didn't have scatter you could still do some a lot of this uh, and and get some results lots of lots of different ways to approach this yeah that's, that's cool uh, okay so let's go back I guess while we're in the world of rocks, just compositionally, I'm going to, oops, uh, 
throw a few more around our scene. Nice, I like it. Little Blue Bears, hello. Hey, hello. Hi, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Andre said, SketchUp and Scatter, the most perfect combination for a landscape designer. I have to agree with you. Very cool. Totally, yeah. Yeah, if you missed the plug earlier, too, um, there's a link. Um, I don't know if it's in, I'll put it in the description, but uh, for the SketchUp Campus course on landscape design that um, has all the goods on on landscape. But yeah, scatter is uh, vital, crucial, a key tool in the toolbox for the landscape designer. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay. This, uh, Maybe it's not the seventh inning, but we're gonna, we're doing a little seventh inning stretch for so, a second. Um, let's do it. Let's go back. We're gonna go back. We need some trees in here. We need trees. I'm taking a pause because there's again, if we look in this world of kind of low poly or, or stylistic modeling and you look towards some other software for inspiration, there's some, there's some cool um, options out there, but almost all of the options out there have a version of vertex editing, which you can get at in SketchUp through Artisan or through vertex tools. Mm -hmm. Both very powerful, very cool tools. I'm gonna try to do just uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to jump into those necessarily vertex tools. We're going to try and do just, I, I, so this, I think this, this becomes kind of the artistic side of what you're trying to create and how you want to stylize stuff and how you want it to look. Mm -hmm. Um, but let's, I wonder if I should, uh, I wonder if I should just build this off to the side or start a different file and copy it back in. <clears throat> New file. Sounds good to me. New file. I'm going to do a six-sided polygon and pull it up. And we're going to make um, kind of a stylized pine tree that we'll throw back into our scene. So a lot of different ways, obviously, we could do this. This is kind of one. So let's say, I just want to split this up into some different, um, divide it up, and then we're just going to start bending it. So let's take this, bend it this way, um, bend it up again. The Crooked Pine. The Crooked Pine. To go with our crooked, uh, poor performance roof. <laughs> so we've got that, and then from this side we'll do the same thing. And I'll tap the right arrow to lock my red direction for... Uh, Eric has a very crucial uh, tip here. Don't forget to bend it like Beckham. <laughs> One of the great, great all time movies. Anyway. <laughs> nice. Definitely. Like, it's up there. Bend with Beckham, Schindler's List, Citizen Kane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the canon of all time greats. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of the Lego tree, you know, the little kind of, is it a palm tree that you can, has like little joints that you can move Oh, over? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> all right, I'm going to use Fredo scale to taper this. 
So I've got Fredo scale over here. Um, I think either of these could, box scaling could work, but uh, it has a box tapering. So let's grab and taper. And we could taper from the center or just taper from, I'm gonna do that. And let's do that again. Andre's asking if you got a snake. We got the snake charmer over here. Although with the taper, it kind of looks like a snake's tail, so maybe it's uh, running away from you. Uh, it does, huh? Or an um, octopus tentacle coming up from the sea. <laughs> Be scared. Based on, on what we've been doing, it should all be triangulated. So if we want to come in and just start tweaking, you know, we could do so. But uh, we don't. That's the point. I'm not going to get too crazy. That's the idea. Maybe we'll make this a little bit thinner on the base. Okay, so for the for the branches, um, I would. I, this is one of those areas where if you showed um, a dozen people who you could you know model and sketch up in various softwares and like showed an example it's like okay everybody go I mean it would be great to see Aaron's approach Eric's approach and everybody out there who um, who also is is very good in sketchup I'm gonna make let's say lucky 11. 11 sides. Okay, okay. 11, just because, you know, it's a palindrome. <laughs> <laughs> Is 11 the shortest palindrome? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Leave it in the chat. Somebody's probably find a... There you go. Something else. We'll see. So, let's do this. Uh... Again, um, I think some some versions of this would leave this as, as single uh, surfaces and then just use textures. I'm going to try to create some geometry down here, but you know, we'll see how it goes. Could fail spectacularly. I reserve the right to fail always. That's what we're all here for. We're just <laughs> bated breath, you know, edge of our seats waiting for something catastrophic to happen. <laughs> At least I am. <laughs> I do not want to disappoint you, Matt. <laughs> um, nice. Well, you've got to do, turn up the risk, you know. Why is Start it... going crazy. I'm about to. Why isn't this line... Copying. I want to select this edge. I could draw them in too, but I basically just want to select the single edge, rotate it, so that I'm splitting all these up. So what? So I'm in. All right. So I did that. Nice. I don't know what's going on with this one. I'm gonna redraw this just in case because it's got some weird geometry going in there. I don't remember why. And I think I'll do the same up here. I just want to give me that center point. Give me that center point. And so let's see how this works. Let's see if this will work for us. Now I'm going to take these pieces and kind of move them up or down in the blue direction to create a little bit of variation here. I 
And again, if, um, if there's some ideas or thoughts, uh, it would be really curious to see how, how different people would approach this. Um, I think those are too th thick, but I we'll, might leave it anyway. People are uh, trying to guess what this was. Got the Apollo command module. Uh, is this an umbrella? Is it a mushroom? It looks like a lampshade a little bit to me. <laughs> We're getting there. You just I've wait. I've got... It's all going to pay off soon. Too much select. I, I just want those edges. I'm going to bring those back so that's a little thinner. Hopefully it's going to pay off soon. Again, no promises. All right, let's make this component. <laughs> going to experimental on you. And I'll, I'll pretend like I didn't name that component to keep the mystery instead of my lazy component naming habits. But no, I'm <laughs> keeping the mystery. I, I'm great at naming components. You're bad at naming components. I'm awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at it. I hand this model off, and I know Aaron's not that much better, so it's okay, but if I handed this model off, say, to Eric or somebody who's more organized, to our friend Dave Richards, he would skin me alive. Like, this is... Open up Outliner and just have a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we, we just want to copy and kind of manipulate these in different ways. We could do that uh, little trick we did before where if we wanted to copy them first, we could do that and then say, you know, uh, box taper them. Ah, I have, this is, this is one of the things where I actually jump back to a mouse sometimes, but something like this. Oh, that's cool. Oh. Ooh, did you save before? See, this is what we talked about, about the, uh... Well, people are probably happy. Yay! <laughs> We're getting, uh, getting crazy I on it. I so. promised you a spectacular fail. <laughs> <laughs> I did not save that. And, uh... Great. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Hey, it's, uh... That's the joy of using, uh using uh, extensions. That is. Oh, this could happen. Well, this is not as bad as the, uh, the Notre Dame model where Aaron lost like two hours worth of modeling. The notorious, yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna start that again. A uh, little behind the scenes. Let's see if I have a uh, little behind the scenes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I did some like Aaron's way better. He so here's our here's a kind of a little practicing I did Ooh. earlier, which is obviously where we're getting to. So I'm gonna copy this. Some people are saying that we might have an auto save. Uh, someone uh, we might. That's worth a. It's um. worth a look. Um, I'd have to remember where those go. Don't make me, don't make me try well, and remember the, where those go. This is the turkey that you already had prepared this coming is, out the oven. So. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Taking a little shortcut. You guys saw the, the the technique, the idea behind the creation of it. So yes, and and we were showing that you could do box scaling and then go tweak it. What I did on this one is I did not do that. I actually, um, let's make. Uh, one of these unique make it unique and let's come in and make these unique I think the top one I, is unlinked but yeah so um, in this case I was just taking them um, and saying rather than do that I there's there's not very many of these. I thought it's better to just come in, rotate, 
tweak, scale it. And so, you know, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, only six or seven of these. So mm-hmm. for me, I, I, it just made more sense to, rather than taper them and then go back and tweak, I just thought, nah. Yeah, that makes sense. So that is the idea I uh, was playing around with. And again, I'd be curious what uh, kind of different um, different ways somebody else might approach this. Yeah, anybody in the chat have a suggestion of how you'd make a little uh, sort of stylized tree like this? And if bunch you of don't, different ways, of course. Probably yeah. a bunch of extensions you could use that would um, get you to a similar point. Or I would think so. Something. Yeah. Or just do it all with no components and just pen tool. <laughs> pen tool, you could do that. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Possible. Ah. Yeah, Keggy says just uh, just go to 3D Warehouse and oh, right. <laughs> that's, that's what I would do. <laughs> you're you're absolutely right. Why why are we doing this? Somebody else has done it. Why would we possibly <laughs> go through this pain? You're absolutely right. And he says this is similar to how he would do it. And Dub says they're looking fantastic. Oh, thank you. Oh, there you go. Got some, some love in the chat. Muhammad says he's got a question for us. Yes. Love questions. I will certainly answer. Tyson may answer. Shoot. What's the question? <clears throat> So I know, like, originally our sort of idea was to do, like, a winter kind of s- scene. And I yeah. didn't know, that didn't really, maybe saving out the snow for the end, I don't really know. But um, I feel like these trees look like they're at home in a winter scene, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, um, so that was, so, yeah, again, a little behind-the-scenes magic. We were discussing what February... Like if we should do a big theme overarching for February, and we did. We thought uh, maybe a winter scene, and that led to sort of this idea of what if we did kind of a winter scene that could be encased in a in a snow globe, and whether you know whether or not this ever ends up in a snow globe. But one of the things that I had thought about when we were back discussing a winter scene, and then it came to this. Let me see if I can uh, make this work. Okay, again we're. Saving. <laughs> Let's see Save. how see how bad we go. Uh, was if I turn my hidden geometry on, um, there's probably a better way to to do this, but well, I could use tools on surface, Fredo's tools on surface, to draw across multiple pieces, but I'm halfway there, so. So we're just gonna do this. So um, this is, whether, again, I don't know it qualifies as low poly, but this is low poly-ish, which makes it nice that I can just draw around, trace some of these, and if I go to Um, a couple of comments in the chat here. People talking about snow globe. Um, I think, yeah, maybe in the next week is when is when we finalize the model. So you can definitely get Aaron to stick this thing in a snow globe. Um, <laughs> somebody asked, what is a snow globe? It's like a little handheld kind of thing. It sits in your hand, but it has a little, you know, a little miniature scene. And then when you shake it, it has water in it. It's like a, a circle with water. And then with a little model inside, when you shake it up, 
it looks like it's snowing because there's little bits of white in the water that um, make it look like it's snowing in the scene. Um, some people were talking about how your, and I think this has to do with the stylized nature of it, but how the, uh, you know, the directions of the of the things are uh, pointing in a little bit different directions, and so the people were saying it wouldn't take the wind very well. But it looks like it, uh, the wind has done a number on it because it's a little <laughs> gnarled. <laughs> so, yeah, perhaps that's kind of the kind of whimsy and fun that we're adding to the stylized model for sure. For sure. Yeah, it looks like the tree's dancing, they said. Uh. <clears throat> Which is funny. Um, and then also we had one question about how uh, can you draw grooves, I believe is what this person means, grooves on a wall. Um, they said groves, but maybe you can uh, clarify the question a little bit. Um, what do you mean by grooves? And Andy, yeah, I'll, I feel like I'm, I'm just very, I don't know why I'm the like color commentator on this because I definitely cannot <laughs> speak eloquently. And I think Andy uh, pointed out that uh, probably my definition of the snow globe is a little uh, meandering, a little wandering. Oh, is it? Huh? I don't know. At least I felt like it was, but we got there in the end. <laughs> Um, yeah, that looks cool. I like the alternating layers. This was one thought about like, yeah, if we were to do the winter scene and these trees were to have snow on them, as with everything, go in, tweak this to your heart's content, make it make it even better. But this was one just little way I was thinking, okay, how do we create that illustrative snow effect? And this was, yeah, a version I came. I thought, yeah, that sort of does it. That's one way. Um, yeah, that's cool. I feel, I feel like it fits the vibe, you know. It uh, does the job, and it's relatively low poly too, which uh, of course is part of what we're going for. Mm -hmm. Studio RT Cool had a suggestion about how to add grooves to a wall with solid tools, so that's a good good way to go about it yeah i don't know if you got clarification grooves on a wall i'm really not sure what that's leading towards uh so um if you have a question just drop it in the chat you don't even have to let us know that you have a question just uh just go ahead and ask us um and also mario said i love when you put the colors on <laughs> love when you add those materials I know I'm I, I'm sorry I'm such a sucker for just the the line so I'll spread some trees around and maybe we should maybe we should entertain the idea of some color <laughs> um, here let's see I am going to I'm going to show that drop tool we were talking about so I just turn perspective off. I've got one of my trees and, I, and I'm going to copy it over here because that way um, I'm not playing it on the surface. So I'm doing what we you know, refer to as a, a relative copy and I've got my stamp on. So I will do a few trees around here and I'm going to pick this other one and See so not command ops and toggle, make sure stamp is on. Maybe over here. Um what he said by what he means by groves is type of lines used in elevations of buildings. So I don't know if that means like you know, cross section like hatching or something section? or Oh or maybe um, Oh, or if just it's, straight up elevation lines on it. Yeah. If it's hatching, that's uh, something. So, yeah, please. Yeah, not really sure. Um, somebody else asked, how can we hide edges um, when we use any component in Revit or something? Um, 
I can certainly speak for SketchUp that uh, you know you can either hide or soften edges, but uh, they're still they're still there. Like when you view hidden geometry, that that line is still there. So when you export it out, like that visibility is only what's like what SketchUp uses for what's it renders on the screen. Um, so that geometry is still there for when you you know bring it into another program. So um, probably that line visibility is controlled within each particular program. Um, so that's what I have to say to that. I don't know if you have anything else about hiding edges when you use a component in Revit or something. I don't know specifically from Revit, but if you, um, but quick, quick, uh, overview of the options to hide edges. If I, You know, just create some sort of geometry here. Um, the eraser tool, if you tap um, the modifier keys down here, and they'll be, uh, they're different on Mac and PC, just as far as like uh, on PC it's control, on Mac it's typically option, but if I hit option, I can smooth so it's not actually erasing the lines, but you see that it tries to create a rendered smooth transition here. If I, let me undo that. If I erase and hold the shift key, I can just toggle it on actually. That will hide the edge, but it leaves the shading as though that it were still there. So you get a more pronounced transition. Now the other thing you can do if you have an object that you're bringing in and you have just a bunch of you know, bunch of stuff. You can select all the geometry and then go to soften smooth, which will bring up this dialog box and play with this slider and toggle these on and off to soften a bunch of like if you if there's just a bunch of edges coming in and it looks like a mess, do that. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully that makes sense and is helpful yeah good call um someone asked have you ever used the extension drop gc so um a little bit ago before we did that drop gc is a great one oops let me just get let me show again yes so the question was i i put all these up here in the air when I copied them, and I just copied them kind of where I wanted them to go because I knew I would drop them. Drop GC is a tool that does just what I'm about to do. There is also a tool built into um, Sketch Plus, and it just happens to be what I had installed. But Drop GC does this kind of this same thing. So if I drop, I click on these, it's going to find where it would intersect with geometry and drop them. Now that's going to be based on the axis, but it's an awesome way to uh, to drop these in. And I'm going to move these all down just like another five or six inches so that they're sort of sitting in the ground. And the last thing is let's randomize them. So let's go back to uh, Fulmer. And again, we could have done something with scatter, but given that we didn't need that many um, I'm just going to say the minimum scale on this. Let's make it about 0.7 max. Three. Let's get a minimum rotation. Um, Sketch Plus was the name of the extension you used for the drop in, right? Sketch Plus, yes. And that's a suite cool. of various tools. Okay. Cool. Oh. Um, yeah, I, uh, drop was pretty cool, and yeah, good call. Gods on the drop GC, similar functionality. So totally nice. That's cool. Uh, yeah, that randomizer is pretty pretty sweet at just getting you to a good spot pretty quick. Yeah. So I, at this, you know, like really at this point, what you need to do, depending on what we're trying to do 
if, if this is a fully 3D model that we just want to spin around on, that's one thing. But if we want to create an, you know, an image or two, then we need to pick our viewpoint and essentially start crafting our, our trees and stuff for our viewpoint. You know, if it was, say, this right here, then obviously we need to get rid of this tree or mm -hmm. move it over here to frame us a little better. But um, sweet Bippy, how are we looking? Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Awesome. Um, catch up on a couple comments in the chat here. Mario says, don't forget to save. 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 Good call. <laughs> Thanks, Mario. For sure. Uh, um, Lawrence asks about what about adding a, a mini stone hin uh, Stonehenge, like in Spinal Tap. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a fun little thing to add in. Um, Studio RT Cool says he's doing grooves now with hardy panel side, making the reveal lines with a cutter. So. There's our mini stone hinge. <laughs> <laughs> nice, it works. Um. Uh, somebody's asking about um, extensions in 2022 and um, do you have to download all the extensions again or will they like kind of port over what's the what's the way to get the extensions working in the new version you know I thought recently as we all go through this pain the, the simple answer I believe yeah you got to do it again I don't know and please out there comment if there's a good tool. I don't know if there's one on Windows and not on Mac, but a tool that essentially will try to capture everything that you've got and port it over. We don't have um, version to version. My experience is you have to manage your plugins again. So again, please correct me. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, although I guess the extension manager makes that a little bit easier than it used to be in the past, but yeah. True. Gotta add them up. Um, this is going back to when you were when you had that view and you got the tree in the way. Uh, Eric said it's a good point. You gotta model to your view as if it's a stage set. Establish your camera and then kind of build your composition and your um, where things are in the scene in relation to that. So good, good idea. Um, one, uh, and we don't do that as much because like Eric is, uh, is really good at rendering and we don't usually take these to rendering might try to but uh, you know at some point but yeah dep again yeah depends on what you're trying to do mm -hmm. um, that's, a, that's a big point that Eric makes in his V-Ray class though is for sure He's like, uh, you know, pick your view, and then you start tweaking your shadows. You tweak everything towards your view, towards what you're trying to create. So, yeah. Um, no, the there the there is still extension manager in 2022. Sorry, I misspoke earlier. Um, just saying that. Yeah, makes it a little easier to manage the extensions, but yeah, for sure. It looks like some folks said you can copy files into your plugin folder, but uh, it could lead to some problems if, um, I don't know, if they're not up to date or other other reasons. God's here asking, will you publish the final model into 3D Warehouse? Sure. Yeah, that's the plan. Um, so yeah, next week keep an eye out. You can have the for that any iteration of it you want, um, and then you can show us how to do it better. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to see what you guys can cook up from the existing geometry here. I don't know if this is. Um, Necessary. I'm just, I'm making some sort of like grass elements that maybe will scatter around. I don't know if this is gonna be a good idea or not. But sorry, Matt, carry on. 
no, no, not at all. That look, yeah, sounds good. That looks cool. Um, I had a question about how can um, I'm not sure, sure if I understand your question about this oval surface. How can we an oval surface between a couple of lines which are not on a straight line? Um, yeah. Maybe clarify what you're what you're trying to do. You have two points that you want to create an oval surface touching those points, but they're not in a straight line. I'm not really sure what you're asking here. Studio RT Cool says he did the V-Ray tutorial. I assume he's talking about on campus, and he said highly recommend. Ooh, very great. Thank so. you. Kind words, thanks. Props to Eric. Um, at this point, too, if anybody has, uh, you know, any other ideas, I think next week, Aaron, again, if we look at our, our reference image here, Aaron may come in and fill out some um, more pieces on the building and, and the, the tower, the, the lighthouse um, aspect. But uh, by all means, if there's other things, ideas, or suggestions that you're like, yeah, hey, well, let's try this, then uh, let us know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We're here to show cool stuff that you guys want to see, absolutely. So, um, holler for what you, uh, what you want to check out. I um, also got a little tangent for you if you want to do a little oh. uh, modeling suggestion here. What's um, so about this question about this oval, the idea I think basically is if you have a plane that's off axis and you want to draw an oval on that plane, what's how would you go about doing that? Um, So we got that, mm -hmm. and you're talking about something like this, where we want to create an oval. In, if you create your plane, if you have that to start with, you can draw a circle on that plane. Um, but then when you go to, you know, make, turn it into an oval, you get this because the scale tool works along the axis. So if I right click on this circle or on this face, Either one should work and say align axis. Then when I hit the scale tool, it's on the uh, so cool. that's one way to do it. Uh, but you could get clarification on if that's yeah, yeah, that's cool. Does that answer your question? Um. How would it be to use SketchUp for game level designs? Would it be easy to import the model to a game software? Um, you know, SketchUp is open as far as uh, export, like there, you know, you can export uh, OBJ or uh, um, I don't know what other kind of files, STL or something like that for. Uh, what would be used for as like an intermediary file between, you know. Um, game level designs. I mean, obviously there's some integration with <laughs> Unity and with other game engines, but um, what would you say for that? Um, if you're going to go to Unreal, they have a tool called Datasmith, and this will directly import your SketchUp models. Now, I haven't played around with it that much. I would like to. I'd love to, to get more familiar and then maybe bring it into one of these live sessions, but I think the thing that you have to be aware of there is Datasmith will bring the geometry in and then you, you can render it and stuff. It, it might be part of the technology that helps bring it into twin motion, I'm not sure. But I don't know how it treats your, your geometry as far as collision meshes. And if you're talking about an actual game, obviously that's very important. So you have the visual geometry 
and then you have the collision mesh geometry and those are not necessarily the same thing. In fact, a lot of times collision mesh geometry will be a lot lower poly. That's a simplistic representation of the higher poly visual geometry. So I don't know, but try Datasmith if you're using Unreal. If you're using Unity, you're right. You can export out of um, SketchUp in some formats that you can bring into Unity. People do it. I don't know entirely. There's. Um... I think also, actually, the newest version of Unity can import SKPs directly. Yeah. That's sweet. Uh, yeah, I think. Shout out to Colin. Uh, you might have known him from the forums, but Colin on our team showed me his little Unity workflow, and uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Pretty simple import there, so. Um, yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, Safe at and got another question. Yeah. Load it up. Ask away. I don't know, Matt. I, I could That's color cool. it. I, I don't, that, that might just be like, the thing here, here, yeah, throw those questions up here. Here's what I think helps. If you're gonna do something like this, at least for me, again, this is all about the visual style. We noticed that I, Aaron may undo this next week, we'll see. He created all of these and he hid the, the edges. I went back in and I unhid some of them. Same with these mm -hmm. rocks here. Right, I have sort of gone through and unhid some of them to be show up as lines just for the style. With this type of grass stuff, I think what you need to do is just first we want to soften, oops, soften these and then hide most. Ah, oh man. Hey, I guess it, I guess it means it's a good, you know, we're we're <laughs> we're playing with fire if we're crashing a lot, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one thing about handing off a model from week to week is that uh, <laughs> that risk goes up. The more more complex stuff you got going on in there. Um, yeah. No, that's a good good <laughs> stopping point, though, for sure. Um, we are. We are at a point where we could. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think the we model's in a it. good spot. Um, you got a question about how to comp uh, prepare a component for use in a 3D printer. Oh. Um, I would certainly suggest getting a solid inspector and cleanup from TomTom. Tom. So those. Uh, because in order to uh, create a sort of a watertight 3D mesh, we would model with what's called in SketchUp a solid, which is, you know, no interior faces and just the exterior geometry. That's what you need when you send the STL to like a slicing software. So, um, so yeah, modeling and with solids is very important. Um, and we have, you know, videos on YouTube that you can look up solid modeling, but, um, yeah, is there any other suggestions you would have for how to prepare a model for for 3D modeling or for 3D printing? Sorry. No, but I'm happy to do a quick show uh, show it how. Yeah, what that'll do. I've got Solid Inspector up right here. It is a free plugin. It's pretty awesome for this sort of thing. Anything that you want to send off, uh, make it a group or component, but just contain it as an object. And if I hit Solid Inspector, it's going to say, oh, yeah, everything's good. But if I let's just put a big old gaping hole in there and I hit Solid Inspector, it's going to say there's, there's face holes. One of the nice things about Solid Inspector is you can say fix, and it may fix it, the errors for you. Um, same thing if I come in here and have a line. You know, if you just have straight geometry, that also makes it not a solid, and that's also something it can fix. It can't fix everything, and if and if you have something, obviously it's a lot more complex. It'll run into issues, but yeah. 
then you just select your object, go up, export as a STL. STL export used to be a plugin. It's it's built in now, and uh, and kick it out. My only when I kick stuff out, I often because I model in inches, I have to convert it to millimeters in my slicing software. But as long as once you've done it and you know what the conversion, and just do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Also, there are some templates, g default templates that are built in when you ever create a new file that are made for 3D printing. So they have the, you know, the um, volume or whatever. What do you call that for the 3D printer? The, the oh build yeah, plate volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th there's some templates, and they'll give you like this is a. For me, it's a, a volume for a laser cutter, but yeah, we've got some templates for you from template and 3D printing. There you go. Yeah, and it has a bunch of different printers in there. So depending on which one you have, you can switch it over to the, just to make sure you're getting the right size and everything, you know? Um, I think, Probably, I'm gonna get rid of it. I I made the grass. I think it's there's too much of it. I I might scatter some in strategically, but just randomly scattered around, it looks messy to me. So I'm gonna lose it. But otherwise, I think we are. Nice. Looking pretty. Just the lighthouse to go. Yeah. Let's try, and we might uh, we might break something here. So I guess I. Ooh, baby. Let's try. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Um, I'm not gonna fire up V-Ray, and uh, then I really will break something. Um, where am I saving this? But let's uh, let's see over here. I've got um, sketch effects. So let's just pick a. Uh, let's try this one and uh, see what happens. Oops, I closed it. Um, Lawrence also points out for 3D printing, if your um, if your info, your entity info shows that you have a volume, then uh, typically that means you're good to go. So it might not have to say actual solid within SketchUp. So good, good call there. Um, Paul, uh, going back to Solid Inspector, said it's useful to show you where the problems are, um, but Sometimes you also, like you mentioned, have to fix it manually, won't automatically doing it. So um, mm -hmm. it does list in the description of Solid Inspector what is wrong with each thing, you know, stray edges or interior faces or whatever. So, um, you know, he says understanding what Solid Inspector is showing you is just as important as fixing it. So good call for that. Excellent point. Um, and Lawrence also recommends for 3D printing modeling much larger than the actual scale. Uh, so when you're creating the model from scratch, make sure it's, uh, you know, in meters or something, and then uh, uh, trans, tr you know, uh, scale it down or just export it with millimeters as the, as the, um, for the scale, so that uh, you don't deal with the small face issue. Mm -hmm. Good point. Um, Paul recommends not waiting to the end to check it. Uh, <laughs> check it along the way to make sure you don't cause crazy errors early good call oh i've got um, we'll see if somebody mentions this i got one more tip for you oh okay um transom says cell inspector is great and if you open the group or component first it highlights the errors in red so that's a good visualization to see where the where the errors are um and then, yeah, wondering what happened to the top of the lighthouse. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's a work in progress. It's a WIP. Somebody said maybe aliens took it. Um, 
that could be the case as well. So. <laughs> you betcha. So you had one more, uh, one more tip for 3D printing, is that right? Uh, it, yeah, one more. We'll see what this render looks like, and then I'll kick out of SketchFX. Um, I don't know. This, this uh, looks cozy. Looks this, a little. This looks fun. SketchUpy. Sketch totally does. Looks sketchy yeah. and and I to I totally sympathize I with with folks who are saying, hey, throw some color on there. You're absolutely right. I'm either too lazy, too scared, or some combination of both. Um, <laughs> we we could spend time doing that, or we could say, hey, Aaron's got all the you know. We could kick it. <laughs> Kick it the can down the road. Yeah, you got it. You you guys in the chat, you have to hold Aaron uh, hold him responsible <laughs> next week. He's doing all the materials for each each individual face in this whole model. That's right. Um, all right. After running sketch effects, sometimes this is a little clunky. So I'm going to start a new file. Here's the other thing. If you're and and uh, everybody's who's done this is gonna know where this is headed. If you're 3D printing, you're working with stuff at a scale that uh, sometimes SketchUp just doesn't play nice with. And what I mean is, if I go into this group and I say, this is actually a little piece that I'm creating and it's about a millimeter long. So right now it's four and I'm gonna say that's that's just one centimeter. So this might be the actual scale and I'm gonna switch over. Um, when you have stuff at a really small scale, you zoom in, you, you can't tell but you're trying to draw on here and your snapping is going to be all over because you might have snapping turned on, you can turn that off, but either way, if I make something here and uh, let's make this, where's my, um, let's make this a hundred segments. And uh, uh, already we're getting some errors, so it's just it's at a small scale that that um, SketchUp can handle, but it's a, SketchUp is an architectural modeler underneath the hood, and it likes things at a bigger scale. And sometimes when you come in and you say I've got two objects, and I want to intersect with model or something like this, this worked out just fine but sometimes it doesn't at this scale. So the thing that you can do when you're doing 3D printing is make sure that all of these are components that you're modeling. But you basically make a copy of your component, scale the outer shell to something like 100 times bigger. And now when I run those operations, it's working at a scale and it just happens that if you know you'd be like well why does that matter shouldn't it be the same but it just works better so mm -hmm. that if you have something really small that you're 3d printing and it's not behaving nicely as you're modeling on it scale it up like times 100 something easy that you can do the the simple math if you need to be accurate you know because that way you know if you're measuring something and it's just one centimeter uh, when you scale it up by a hundred, then it's one meter and you can do the translation fairly easily. But anything mm -hmm. you do on this larger piece is still going to happen on your small piece. And then this is what you're going to kick out. So that's the other tip for if you're going to 3d print is know that make components, scale those components up really big and edit the big, uh, version. If the geometry is not playing nice. So that's, but excellent tips all around yeah. with uh, that solid inspector will alert you to the pieces, you know, nested and stuff that you need attention. So, 
Yeah, cool. Great tip. So next all week, right. everybody's got to show us pictures of all the 3D prints that you did. Yeah. Over the weekend. All right. How, how's everybody's weekend? I hope everybody has uh, has good stuff in store. Um, and, you know, this has been fun. This has been kind of a, a fun different project, so I hope there's good tips in, uh, coming out of here and I appreciate uh, for sure all the suggestions from all you experts out there across the world what a great like how, how awesome everybody's coming in from the all over the place SketchUp stream yeah yeah it's great I uh, I appreciate you going uh, going up with this increasingly more complex model with all these extensions and stuff and <laughs> having a couple crashes but you uh took it in stride and nailed it and now uh, yeah it was a great session nice work thanks everybody for watching of course and uh don't forget next week aaron will be topping this model off definitely with the top of the um of the lighthouse there but also whatever you request materials included uh and see if you can also fit in editing this model so it's 3d printable too <laughs> yes <laughs> make him 3d print it i mean eight hour stream <laughs> but uh but yeah no tune in next week and see the conclusion <laughs> of this model and then now uh, we'll also share the, the model on 3d warehouse too so um cool Nice. I think that's it, everybody. So, yeah, folks in the uh, UK, like you said, stay safe with that uh, crazy wind going on out there. Don't be flying any kites now. You might uh, fly away. So, Don't start any fires. That's how the Colorado fire just tore through a bunch of urban neighborhoods as, as we were having 100-mile-an-hour-plus winds that just was blowing it everywhere. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, stay safe. Recipe for disaster yeah cool yeah uh thank you tyson thank you everybody in the chat and uh hey have a spectacular weekend you know please Adios. do thank you we'll uh we'll see y'all next time cheers everybody Critical!